Japan's number one bowler is the number one seed tonight at the World Series of Bowling. Shota Kawazoe is seeking the first PBA title of his illustrious career, but four of America's best will try to take him down, including reigning player of the year E.J. Tackett and the sensational Anthony Simonson. Beware, the Sharks are out tonight. It's the PBA Shark Championship on FS1. Let's take a look at the brackets. Matt Russo, he fell to EJ Tackett in the round of eight, but he qualified for the finals. It's the highest seeded round of eight non-winner. See, Anthony Simonson had drama to win 3-2 to get the three seed. And so now it's Russo and Chris Prather to lead us off. And Chris Prather's familiar with the World Championship stage 2022 PBA World Champ. Yeah, he's had a lot of success in this event. And he's really quietly turned his season around. And it started with the doubles win with his partner back on Sunday, Andrew Anderson. Well. Two, four, seven, eight. The trick here is to cover that back pin, that eight pin. Seen a lot of players throwing it straight at this, but old school is you hook, you throw a hook into this so that you can cover that back pin. Russo said this night was house money. That guy's still on a high. Not the way you want to start the evening though. Too heavy on the two pin, chops, chops it straight back off the four, and it's an open early for Russo. Chris Prather said, I definitely want to finish on the left because the right has been known to, to cause more issues, so you couldn't ask for a better setup for the 32-year-old. Two-time major champion. Ooh, good break, 10, go, ten goes, just the two. But you're right about the right lane, and talking with all the players, they said, hey, whoever figures out the right lane is probably going to win this event. What's there to figure out? Well, it's a little bit tighter down lane, and so on this pattern being at 48 feet, you can't give away the pocket too much. The ball won't make it up. You can't go too straight. You can't go too wide. It's got to be right in the middle of that, and you got to make great shots. Chris Prather, we had a great conversation with him earlier tonight. Let's take a look at his arsenal. The attention star was what he talked with us about. DNA coil on the right lane, attention star on the left. And there's a strike for Chris Prather. Randy, he told us I'm a lot more confident in my abilities. He felt like last year he was a robot. Well, he, he had a lot of voices in his head, right? And, and uh, all with great intentions. But he decided to start relying more on his instincts. He said somebody would ask me a question, or rather I would ask someone a question and, and give me the answer. I just robotically followed that. He said, now I'm trusting my instincts. Russo is in some deep waters to start. And just a uh, clean up on Chris Prather's equipment. He's using DNA coil on both lanes. Not the start Russo's looking for, obviously. 379 now. 
likelihood of going back to back open frames very high. First time he's left this this tournament. So back to back opens for Russo. The lone lefty tonight. We've seen high scores throughout this year's World Series, but the, the scoring pace slows down just a little bit when we come over to the dome. The Strobel Arena. These lane beds are about two years old and uh, they're a little bit fresher than on the other side where all the qualifying is held. Russo needs a response of some sort. Nice. Messenger came and sent the seven away. Let's take a look at tonight's oil pattern, the PBA Shark, 48. Yeah, the longest of the patterns. And you can see it right away how much straighter the players are going through the front part of the lane. I think also we need to mention that with every pattern, there's been different oil used. Good shot. The 10 for Prather. Explain what you mean by that. Well, th there's different oils being used for each pattern, which uh, what, what makes the oil different is the additives. It used to be back in the day was viscosity, but not anymore. It, it's now it's the additives that are used in the oil that goes into these machines that oil the lanes. And some of the additives make the oil a little stickier. Some make it slicker. So some oils are a little bit more high friction, some very low yeah. friction. Oh. Chris winning on Sunday with Andrew Anderson, Ralph Holman, PBA doubles title. For the second Focus. time. Yes. One of his six tour wins. He said he's never felt better about just his instincts, his ability to ditch a ball if it's not working. He hated it, but it worked out all right. And maybe that sums up where Chris Prather's at with his game. Well, he hated it because it was inside a target, but the good news is, is that now he knows he can miss a little bit left, and the ball just laid there. Randy, in qualifying, he shot under 200, thought he was going to miss out on being one of the 16 left into the bracket. The last game, yeah. He drives to McDonald's. He <laughs> goes from the dollar menu in the drive through to getting a text from his wife saying, come back, you're going to be in a roll-off with Kevin McCune. More, yeah. more of that story to come because it's there's a lot more to it. Yeah. Never has a double cheeseburger turned into more dollars. He just got a soda. Oh, our orders are different. They usually are. <laughs> You're in rare form tonight. Russo cleans that up. Winner here gets Anthony Simonson. What a moment for Matt last night. Yeah, it was great. He earned every bit of it. Had a great match with Packy. Packy faltered late with three out of four opens. And Matt just, you know, did what he had to do. He kept the ball in play, made that 3-9 uh, spare in the seventh, 228-192 winner. His dad, Tom, here again tonight. Russo. Looks like Russo made a ball change to Ethereum. Here's his dad, Tom. What a nice man. He said, son, that trophy, go get it. It's yours. Last night. One good one on the swing. Good shot there. See if he can climb back into this. The early adjustment. All right, now let's talk more about this after the shot. Beauty. So you talked about he goes to McDonald's, he gets yes. texture his wife, but I think the, the beauty of the story is that he pulled 
this tournament, Shark, with three bowling balls. Three. He was kind of disgusted with his ball reactions, and there were three balls left in the locker room. One of them was a spare ball. He said, well, these two balls haven't looked good all week. I'll try these. <sighs> Shoots 196, last game of qualifying, okay. drags his three-ball roller out to the car, goes to McDonald's, gets the call, <laughs> comes back in with his three-ball roller. Same three balls. Makes the telecast. He likes it. Back to back jacks. That's how you do it. You know, in that shot that he didn't like on that lane that struck, that 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 was a that was like a picture showing him, hey, you can miss a little bit left on this left lane. Chris Prather sure likes it here, and rightfully so. Just underway in the Shark Championship. It is so great to be at Tom Strobel Arena at Thunder Bowl Lanes. Yeah, my first PBA tour event. Enjoy it, young man. That sign is awesome, and he is a packet fan. Says hello to his mom. That's awesome. I signed his bowling pin earlier. Did you? He was so excited. I was, I was like, wow, that's awesome. He even knows who I am. That kid watches bowling. Everybody knows who you are. That's not true. So Matt Russo is trailing by 42 pins, a tough start. Ball change. Back on that right lane. Now strike on the right thus far. And that remains the same here. That right lane is the bugaboo. Talked last night a little bit about some of the changes that Matt's made in his game. He recently took his thumb out of the ball. And he said, man, did my whole world change. Big scores here during the Shark Championship qualifier. Russo averaging over 240. Prather, 237 and a half. Big scores all week long. Or I should say all three weeks long here at the World Championship because when it's all said and done, these players that make it through every cut and get to the World Championship, they're going to be here for 21 days. It's amazing. That's what makes this bowling's grandest stage with over a million dollars in prize money on the line. Matt said he really wasn't comfortable or confident in his ball selection on the show last night. He just wanted to make sure he threw good enough shots on that right lane. And he did more than that. He said he just trusted his eyes. Well, the left has been no problem for Russo. Yeah, the, the problem is he has to finish the match on the right lane. And he's trailing by 42, and he hasn't struck there yet. Which leads us Online. to our standings in the World Championship. Match play will be held tomorrow. That can be seen on Bowl TV. Matt Russo at the top. Saturday's coverage on FS1 and 7 Eastern. Prather leaves the 10. Sunday at noon on Fox. 9 of 16 left-handed. Get the root. See right behind Chris Prather is. There you go. Take another S look. Still have EJ Belmonte on the right, but lots of left-handers. Lefty heavy as Prather cleans it up and has a 41 pin advantage. Last night, all but one left-handed. Jason Belmonte, our only right-hander. All no thumbers. You know, and I started kind of a wildfire. My, my point that I was trying to make last night was a discussion, a thread. Because we had all two-handers and no thumb, will the sport ever get to a point where the thumb becomes obsolete? Prather leaves the 10. You weren't doing it in a negative way. You were bringing up the point to raise some discussion right. at the dinner table. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, is, there, is, is it ever going to get to that point? I mean, I don't think so. No. But with more and more youngsters doing it, more and more players coming out on tour doing it, and, I mean, like, like we talked about last night, all five. First time in, in history on the PBA Tour. You know, my other question is, 
When do you think it'll take off on the women's tour? And I know there's a couple out there that are doing it. We just haven't seen it yet. This sport continues to evolve. Jason Belmonte told us that last night. He's like, I spent hours, days trying to perfect my yeah. craft. Now these kids, they do it so easily. Yeah, because they, they can go to YouTube now and watch it. Russo has yet to strike on the right. Hasn't been able to Russo figure it out. Hurts. Too hard, doesn't hook. Throws it too slow, it hooks. Throws it too hard, it doesn't hook. Oh, he got off to a bad start and he could never catch up. No. Because he can't double, he can't hit the right lane. Back to back opens to start. You know what was really cool? The moment that he won last night, his dad Tom gave him the phone. Johnny Petraglia. Was on. Yeah, Go JP. On. JP, the legend, the Hall of Famer, signed me to my first ever staff contract. Nothing but love for Johnny Petraglia. He talked to Parker shortly after that as well. Parker won the third, and yeah, it, it, there was uh, Parker's son, I think, was in tears. He was. Yeah. It's cool to see how much the greats love Matt Russo. Look at that. Big Nasty. There's a great Hall of Famer. Wes in the house. Scorpion King is here at this shark tonight. Oh, yeah, that's a strike. Should be a strike, and it is, Mr. Russo. Well, the problem for Matt is he's bowling on shark against the shark. Chris Prather. Oh. And it's ironic, as Chris said, as you can see the sharks on his jersey. He's got that nickname, but he's never won this event. He won the Scorpion in 2019. He said, now it's time. T tonight, the shark needs to be king of the water. She done. And Chris Prather will be meeting up with Anthony Simonson. Right lane is already starting to look funky. We haven't gotten to our first match. If you're just joining us, that's what the players told us for an hour and a half earlier today. Can you figure out this right lane is Prather just needs six pins. As I almost break my ankle. That wouldn't be good. Don't do that, Chris. No, no. no. Chris, a Wichita State product. Chris Prather, the shark keeps swimming. And there's your attention star he just went to on that shot. All right, let's go down to the floor and Tour rep Tim Mack. Tim, what advice are you going to give Chris Prather moving forward into the second match? Well, I, 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 Randy, I, I really think it's a ball change on the right lane. I think he's got to go to the attention star. It's a little quicker off the spot, goes through the pins a little bit differently. We switched to that ball in the 10th frame as well. I didn't want him to switch in the ninth because, uh, you know, if he opened, I, I didn't want to have the match in hand. But now that he's got the match in hand, probably make that change on both lanes. Do you think he'll use that ball on the left lane as well? Left lane as well. We switched to it already on the left lane. Right. Frame. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, and, and we're, we're going to go to the right on the right lane as well. Okay, thanks, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, is Great stuff. On this lane or what? <laughs> and for Matt Russo, there's a lot to be proud of this week. He's not done. He's got the world championship still. Yeah, absolutely. And he'll go into match play tomorrow. It's the top seed. The Scorpion King, baby. I just needed the noise. <laughs> he just needed the noise. We have seen this. This place has gotten a Portland-like vibe with the every, crowd. Every now and then. 
I'll tell you what, this is a this is one nice kid. Yeah. Easy to root for. And his wife he posted last night. She's his everything. Lauren, head women's bowling coach at Maryville University in St. Louis. Good luck to them at the ITC. How about that? Is, is that not does that not sum it up? <laughs> no pressure. I just dug every time. Yeah. When it doesn't matter. Yeah, there's supposed to be loud every shot. It's like a fill shot. When you haven't struck yet on that lane, it's guaranteed. Thank you. And there's the fill shot. <laughs> We haven't seen the last of Matt Russo this week. That's awesome. He Thank won't you, be the shark champ. The luck. shark Thank moves you. on. Welcome back to the 15th World Series of Bowling. PBA on FS1 from Allen Park, Michigan. Strobel Arena. Anthony Simonson. He has developed a reputation to be one of the more energetic players in this sport. Let's go in the pocket with him. I'm Anthony Simonson, and I currently live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I've done this for now 23 years. Growing up, I spent a lot of time just practicing and practicing. The bowling alley was almost essentially my daycare. There is some talent, but there's also been a lot of hard work that people haven't seen. You know, they haven't seen the years and years and the hours of practice that have gone into this. Let's go! The goal is, as we do this professionally, is to make it look as easy as possible. Aside from being a pro bowler, I call myself a part-time mechanic, I guess. Yeah, give me I've always wanted to be the guy that could come in, I could beat you on the lane. If your machine's broke, I can fix it. If your lane machine doesn't work, I can do it. Making some food in the snack bar, giving some shoes out at the front counter. Bowling's what I know, so uh, I figure I'm gonna just try to know everything I can in that world. His mother, Teresa, dropped him off at the bowling alley from as early as the age of five. He was restocking rental shoes. And now he's one of the biggest names in all of bowling. And he meets Chris Prather. This is their seventh all-time meeting. The series is tied at three. Simonson with starting lane choice. He chose to start on the right lane, which means Prather will finish on the right lane. opens with a strike and that's the ball change that he went to last game in the 10th frame Simonson he's going to start with DNA coil on the right lane Missouri Classic earlier this season. Messenger. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. Your table is ready. The Just Right Strike is brought to you by Just Bear. The mindful choice for high quality protein with no antibiotics ever. Be like Anthony Simonson. Have your protein to start the night. Just Right. Just Bear. The Swiss Army Knife of Bowling. He's going with that same ball on the left lane, DNA Coil. Back-to-back oh. hey, hey. -back jacks for Simo. Speaking of DNA, he's got some pretty good bowling DNA. Some regard him as the most talented player out on this tour. In the Rolling Stone feature on him, Trust it. that was out recently Chris Prather is quoted in the feature they talked to Chris about Anthony nice and in the feature don't leave me hanging Simonson's Chris is bringing up the fact that Anthony was entering tournaments at the age of 12 against the nation's best college teams including Wichita State Chris was a bowler at Wichita during this time 
And Chris says to the Rolling Stone, we're bowling with, with other college guys, and I'm bowling next to this 12-year-old who's bowling two-handed. He's one of the first two-handers I saw. He's striking every single shot and walking around like he owns the entire building. I'm just trying to survive. <laughs> That's great. Oh, boy. Well, oh, boy. A triple for Prather. For a second, looked like it was going to go a little bit high, maybe a four pin, but there's a four pin going down. Yep, yep, he was. He thought the same yeah. thing. Yeah. That looked different. Are you surprised at all, a 12-year-old Simo just dominating? I'm not surprised at anything Simonson does. Just a presence unlike any other. Tom Clark, who's looking on, oh, seated next to Kathy Strobel, the wife of Tom tonight, says, you just never know what you're going to see from this kid. I mean, he can just do it all. And once he gets focused and he gets dialed in, he's super hard to beat. Just 27 and already five majors. Youngest player to achieve that feat in PBA Tour history. And you see how he got here. It, it took drama. Nicola Pangolini, a 3-2 win in the round of eight after beating Matt Sanders. He went to distance in both matches. He likes it. He likes it. You see that step over to the right? Player likes it. In, in the first two games of Shark Championship qualifying, he had a backup ball. Well, he threw a couple of backup balls on the left side to start, and he was in 88th place after the first <laughs> round of qualifying and then said, you know, I'm going to just kind of do what I do. And then I think the next block he averaged over 250. And that evening, second round, he came into a conventional game plan shot. 1283 to rise from 88 to 20th. Lean on it. Come around, and it did. The leaner. The Ten's in a good mood this evening. Oh, no. Oh, I hope you didn't jinx it. Next 10 pin left is on you. Just saying. What do I owe you? No, I mean, the players. Mm. Refocus. Trust the move. All right, let's see if he bumps this in a little bit. Maybe a board left with his feet. Last shot was a little high. Same. That one laid there like Grandpa on the couch after Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. And you could see him shaking. He's like, be, the players aren't expecting that ball to hold its line, and it is. So now that tells, oh, he threw a shot like that in game one. Got it in, laid there. He went, oh, wait, hang on a minute. I got a little hold there. And you can oh, right see the wide right, right there. Trip to 2810 out. What a huge break to stay even. Watch this. 2810, no more. I mean, that is a gigantic break. Through five, even. I won't use the word to provide any more jinxes, RP. I'm done doing that. <laughs> Simonson, a good eight boards left of where Prather's playing him. Eight boards left. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. Wow. What a start to game two. Well, grab your popcorn. Grandpa might have to wake up on the couch because this is too good. Strikes on strikes in Motown. Smokey Robinson singing. time.
time we see somebody blink, it's that 10. It's on that right lane, which is where Prather will finish. And really, that's the only pin you have to look at on that right lane. Can the players get that 10 pin out? Let's take a look at how these two players are attacking the 48-foot shark oil pattern. Simonson much different. Eight boards different at the laydown, where the ball comes in contact with the lane. About six boards at the arrows. So much different shape for Simonson. Pray they're going much straighter. Hey, it's really cool. the two lanes there's hold on that left lane and the ball has a much better shape much better motion going through the pins now Simonson fresh off of that trip 2 8 10 on the right lane takes a re-rack he's never won a title at the World Series of Bowling hard to believe 14 PBA Tour titles we asked him why is that? He said, well, qualifying less games. A little harder events to win. Wow. So he is in that same boat on the right side in the seventh, which is why he wanted Prather to finish there. Back-to-back -back flatties on the right lane. You asked for much better here in just our second showdown of the night. That says it all, but as you always say, one shot can change it all. I think it's a big advantage for Simonson to finishing on this left lane. He did not make the world championship cut, so this is his one chance this week to be a champ. Which is that advantage. Just watch the 10 pin on this shot for Prather. Come on now. <sighs> Just switched balls on that right lane. DNA oh, coil yeah. now. But the four did not. A little more responsive bowling ball down lane, and, and that looked like a really good shot. He just didn't make a big enough move with his feet to the left. But he rolled it beautifully, and it just responded a little more than he thought it would. It's that right lane. Sunday on Fox, the stars of NASCAR head to Talladega for the biggest thrill ride of the year. The pre-show kicks off at 2 Eastern, then the green flag flies at 3.30 Eastern, Sunday on Fox. Chris Prather asked for a re-rack. He, he talked about actually a second one. Yes, now. sir. Your thoughts? Hey, let's go down to the floor with tour rep Rob Gotchel. Rob, what do you see happening out there and why the two re-racks for Chris Prather? I think he's just collecting himself a little bit. You know, he, he was pretty committed to the ball change on the right lane coming out of the commercial break. Uh, he decided to stick with the other ball and just kind of roll it more than a 10 bid. Uh, and so then he, he, he switched in the eighth and went a little high in the fourth end. So I think he's just collecting his thoughts. Now what, Rob? 
Yeah, I mean, that one just came off it. He threw a good shot, came off it, went, went high and stone to nine. I mean, we saw Belmo do it twice on that same lane last night. Uh, and, you know, it, it is what it is. And now he's going to hope for a little help from Simo. All right, Rob, thank you. I don't think he's going to get a whole lot of help from Simo, but you never know. I thought the last two shots were pretty good for Prather. Both nine spares. Asking this guy for some help. Yeah. That, that's tough. It's like asking you to borrow five bucks. Jeez. Wow, he's shaping it so nice. He is in mode and is in the driver's seat. Got my second re rack. As he asks for a second re rack. What a beautiful shot here by Simo. And now he just needs any mark in the 10th frame. And the winner of this, well, you have to meet one EJ Tackett. I've heard of him. Simo met him earlier this year in Springfield. Pete Weber Classic and beat him. And Route 2 is only win this season. Ooh. Hold on. Hold on. What just happened? Looked like he got slow. He right did. through the face. Three, four, six, seven, ten. You got to get the ball over here to the right side of the three pin. Cut it into the four and the seven. It is makeable. No, and so the door cracks open. Wide open. Prather needs to double on this right lane. A double in three, and he moves on. He has not struck his last two times on the right. He struck his first two. Believe in yourself. Come on now. Last time four pin with this ball change. Let's see what kind of move he makes here. He, he loved that shot. It went high. Anthony Simonson will meet EJ Tackett in a heavyweight showdown. Wow. Crather had an opportunity. Samo wins. Let's find out from Rob Gotchel, tour rep. What happened on that shot? Because it looked like Chris Prather liked it. Yeah, I think it was a good shot. Uh, just a little little in and a little slow, and he caught it. It went high. He was trying to make, make sure it went through the pins. All right, thanks, Rob. Simon, Simonson's moving on. And this is really classy. Chris Prather's going into the crowd. He's giving fans some of his bowling balls. Let's flash back to 359 nights ago, April 23rd of 2023, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. E.J. Tackett needed two strikes to win in the deck. He got both. He beat Jason Belmonte, his fourth career major title, the world champion, and his fifth on the PDA Tour en route for Chris Schenkel Player of the Year season. And now he meets Anthony Simonson. Just another challenge for Tackett. 0 for 4 on TV against Simo with the right to meet Shota Kawazoe for the title. And now Kimberly is with the reigning player of the year. EJ, this is the sixth TV final that you've made this season. You're on pace to beat the single season average. You know, you're third in points, but everybody keeps talking about the fact that you haven't won yet this season. And I think so far it's been a great season for you. But what is your take on your season? I mean, it has been a great season. I've, I've bowled a lot of really good games to put myself on TV that many times. Um, just need to bowl a little bit better here, and uh, hopefully I can do that today. And uh, got a very tough opponent, Anthony Simonson, so I know I'm going to need lots of strikes. And let's talk about that because there were a ton of strikes in that last match. You got some strikes in you? I sure hope so. Are these my strike and shoes? I, I sure hope so, actually. So we're, we're about to find out here very soon. Good luck to you. Thank you. So for EJ Tackett, speaking of that season, this is his sixth championship yeah, round appearance in 11 events this season. Okay. Hold on. Come on, bro. 
Hold on. Good to see the sportsmanship there. And as we have seen throughout the evening, Randy Peterson, Simonson will begin on the left as the higher number seed, and he'll finish on the tricky right. Wow, that was from way in. Big move Whoa. for Simonson on the left lane. Remember last game, what he did, that big split, right? That was a good four to five boards left of his last shot the last game. So big move to the left, trying to find more oil to get the ball to lay off. Okay, spare for Simonson and now tack it. Yes, he has a chance to break Jason Belmonte's 2019 PBA record average of 229.39, including his 71 games in the World Series of Bowling. He is averaging 230.60. Two. Well, that first shot he was in, and he is just banging on this shot at the bottom of the swing. That open hand release, bent elbow, cupped wrist, and then it all becomes one straight line to create those revolutions. The open hand, reminiscent of Pete Weber, the great PDW. EJ starting off with Pride Dynasty as you take a look at his arsenal. He didn't start this World just Series. Just for my ball to come back. Right, he's just <laughs> waiting for his ball to come back. He was dealing with his spine angle. Right, and we'll get to that right after this shot. Explain to you what that means and what he is trying to accomplish with his setup. There's a strike. There's the friendly left lane. So what he has to avoid is getting tilted too early because his his push away gets quick. It gets the ball gets into the swing early. Then he gets steep. His feet try to catch up, and typically what happens is his elbow will fly, and he'll miss it at the bottom. And those are some of those shots that we've seen before where he'll actually go light. Maybe the super washouts, missing the, the head pin. And that's the one shot he needs to avoid. Now Simo on the right. Messenger. No. Yeah, and right now the players, they know exactly what the pair is giving them. And it's just like, hey, let's just try to get through the right lane maybe catch a couple of strikes, but we got to perform in that left lane so we can double up. So we told you about that Pete Weber, Missouri Classic. Anthony Simonson's lone win this season, February 18th. He was the five seed, became the first person since Jason Belmonte last year at the Tournament of Champions to climb the step ladder to the title. He beat A.J. Johnson, Matt Russo, then E.J. Tackett in a great matchup. To reach the championship match, defeated Bill O'Neill. That embrace is an embrace of greatness. 14th career PBA Tour title. Wow. Pretty deep right now. You can see the ball crossing at the 28th board going out to 11. So he's in. He's in there. Take a look. Just to the right of sixth arrow. That's some deep sea fishing. Yes, sir. That's nosebleed territory if you don't have a rev rate. There you go, EJ. On the right side. I thought he made an interesting point when we interviewed, interviewed him earlier this afternoon. 
He said, you know, it, it, I'm a m momentum guy. And he says, I haven't bowled in four days. Yeah. And he said that that's part of the, not rationale, but part of the reason when people are like, wait, you're making these shows. The expectation is to win. And, and of course it is because he's EJ Tackett, but he said, it's like a pitcher. When, when you haven't thrown for a while, and then you're being asked to come out of the bullpen four or five days later and put it in one game. That's not easy, but he makes it look that way. I think if you, if you ask some of the players out here just how tough it is to win on this tour, I think they, they'd all have the same response. But this is a beauty. EJ's just saying, all right, come on, just get the 10 out and we're good. And that's it. Six cuts the 10 out. Between these two players, 35 titles, nine majors. This man's only 27. Good shot there. Beauty. One more on the left lane, and he'll take the lead by one. Hard to believe that EJ has never beaten Simonson on television. That's really hard to fathom. Look at that. How low he gets to the foul line. Upper body parallel to the floor. Just a little softer speed for Simo on that right lane. So deep. Oh. Ten. Six around the 10 that time. When he faced EJ in Missouri, it was a 203 to 193 game. And EJ said it to us. It wasn't like he felt like he bowled poorly. It's just Anthony struck out. Yep. Late. EJ becoming a dad this year, his son Trip, Eddie the third born in December. Beautiful wife Natalie. Right there, the right side of your screen. That was terrific from Tackett on the right side. There's Natalie, new mom. E.J. Tackett is just knocking the snot out of those finger holes right now. He is just revving it up. See how he got here? Beating Matt Ogle and Matt Russo. Russo was the highest seed left, though, of the non-winners. That's how he got to tonight. EJ Tackett's feeling it. He's feeling it, Randall. Yes, he is. He's in full predator mode. It's shark night in Detroit. Who's going to move on to the final two greats dueling? That is really awesome. It's such a cool thing that the PBA does. We welcome you back. Thunderbolt Lane, Strobel Arena. Hi. Anthony Simonson faces a deficit of 32, entering the sixth. That's a response from Simo on the right. All right, let's go down to the floor now and talk with tour rep Rob Gottschall again. Rob, the only thing Simonson has left other than that split in the last game are 10 pins. In order to get back into this match, he's got to get that corner out. What does he have to do? Yeah, he's just trying to control his ball speed. Nothing different. He's making good shots. His specto data is really, really good. Uh, so he's just trying to make sure he controls the ball speed to get it to read a little bit quicker and uh, just go through the pins a little better. All right, thanks, Rob. 
you know, these players can all hit the pocket, but the great ones figure out a way to get their ball to go through the pocket correctly so they strike when they do hit the pocket. And these are two great players. Has been deep on that left side throughout the night and has not been able to maintain the rhythm there with the 10 up. 410 pins through seven frames for Simonson. And interestingly enough, three of them have come on the left. Hey, Randy. Yeah. Where do you get all those great numbers from? From our good friends over at Lane Talk. For more information, please visit lanetalk.com and feel free to download the free app. It'll help you be a better bowler. I'm not really cheap, am I? No, you're not. That was I was kidding. The check catches for Tackett. All right, that's like we talked about his spine angle and what EJ tries to do. And he said, you know, I felt like I was getting tipped early, so I got to keep my shoulders back a little bit longer. And here you see it. What it does is it increases the flat spot at the bottom of the swing. That was beautiful. He is just knocking the tar out of those finger holes, bro. I mean, he's getting after it. You could sense, talking with him earlier, that he's ready to, to silence some people here tonight because of all the takes of some of the lack of success on the shows. Yeah. Look, you keep knocking on the door, eventually it's going to open. EJ is so good. I mean, just to make six shows in a season, I don't care. Look, you still have to have so many things go your way on the telecast. Getting there, I mean, getting there six times, that's why he's great. That's why he's the reigning player of the year. He just needs to get uh, have a couple things go his way, and he's going to win multiple times this season. I'm not even worried. Simonson on the right side. You make such a great point because as EJ said, there are things, he felt like on multiple shows this year, he bowled well. He bowled well. But you're going up against the best in the, on the planet. Take a look at the difference in Simonson's last two games and how he's playing the left lane. That's just one game. Wow. But he made a big move in match number three. And you can see it right there. There's a good five boards at the launch and four boards at the arrows. Big jump. Five boards. And it may be the reason why he's leaving so many corners. Maybe he's too steep now. It. Over did it? No, that time he got it out. I mean, it look, he actually got it a little bit farther right of target and shaped it a little bit more. It almost looks like he moved right with his. I mean, we knew it. Yeah. Out about a thousand. His position at the arrows was definitely right. And he didn't like it. Yet that one shaped perfectly and got the 10 out. So It's what you just said. On, on a TV show, sometimes you have to have certain things go your way. you got to have some luck. you got to have some good fortune go your way. I mean, it's all there is to it. Tackett fever in Allen Park tonight. He's going to bowl for the title. My goodness, E.J. Tackett. He's so good. Best player with his thumb in it. That's for sure. Randy, you are a Hall of Famer. You've been doing this 25 years. EJ Taka versus Shota Kawazoe. How's that sound for a final, my friend? I mean, it just... It just sounds... Nice, 479. It just sounds like the potential for more history at the World Series of Bowling. And... You know, um, what it would mean to Shota and his country. Never seen a... Oh, you keep it. <laughs> Japanese player win a PBA tour title. EJ Tackett has been on the prowl for his first win of the season. For the first time ever, he beats Anthony Simonson on TV. First time ever. And for Simonson, 
Well, just a couple of minor miscues. And so Shota Kawazoe, who you just saw on your screen, the man from Japan, <laughs> trying to make history tonight, is going to meet the reigning player of the year. Fun to see Tackett and Simonson go up against each other. I mean, it's always going to be a great show and a great broadcast when you have those two on. How could it not? I call them uh, two of the best in the world. Not better. Okay. Are you ready for this final? I really am. I, I, I'm really excited to see what Shota brings. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. That's what's at stake. The PBA Shark Championship, EJ Tackett versus Shota Kawazoe. They have met once before, 2017 PBA Japan Invitational. EJ won it, and Randy, take it away. Timmy Mack, what type of strategy did you come up with for Shota to try to win the, for the first time ever on the PBA Tour? Listen, the smart thing is if you watch uh, EJ's match, he has little shallower angles than Anthony and his ball carried a little bit better. That's what Shota loves to do. So we're going to keep our angles shallow and we're, we're going to hit the pocket and Godzilla's going to strike. Thanks, Timmy. That was Thank great. You. That was awesome. T Tim Mack is, every time we talk with him, I learn something fun or new. He's awesome. One of my best friends. EJ Tackett. 21-time PBA Tour champion. Shota Kawazoe, 21-time Japan PBA Tour champion. Here we go. You know, EJ's a great friend, and, and so is Shota. It's kind of hard to root against anyone in this match from my seat. But I'll tell you what, this is the biggest moment in Shota Kawazoe's career. The one thing in his favor, I, I will say, that he loves the long patterns. And this is the longest year at the World Series of Bowling. 9.30 a.m. local time in Osaka, Japan. He told us his family, friends, whole area watching and hoping. Well, a yeah. little bit of fortune. That's the nerves. Yep. One of five players in this event without a game under 200. Excuse me, the only one of the five finalists that never had a game under 200. As we take a look at his arsenal going with Lightning Blackout. We asked him, what is it about this pattern that you like? He said, I like longer patterns. Suits my game well. No. No. It didn't give. Oh, he gets the massive break on the right leg, trip it out. The Brooklyn strike, and then this time he throws a nice shot and leaves that shaker seven. Hmm. But like I said in the on camera, he's going to have to bowl a perfect game, and I don't mean by score, I don't mean 300. But he has to he has to be flawless. I and mean, he got away with one in the first frame and and converts the seventh pin. That would have been a nice start. A good break. Strikes there. Starts with a double. EJ Tackett is locked and loaded. Randy, we've seen him have a good year. He has yet to win on tour this season after the five titles, including the two majors. A world championship last year, that epic showdown with Belmo. His execution tonight has been close to flawless. Boom. When you see a player do this at the foul line, you know that they've aced the shot. Watch this. That's called posting it up. 
That like tiger with the iron and then, you know. And then the twirl? Yes. Yeah. Strike percentage for the week, or excuse me, for this event. Kawazo is second. Tack at sixth. <laughs> Triple for EJ. Hey, you want to take a look at his finish one more time? Yes, sir. Yeah, this isn't an instant replay of the shot on the right lane. This is on the left lane. Wow. That's identical. Yeah. And the So the pressure gets applied. Well, back to back bad shots on the right lane. It's almost like he's afraid to get it to the right. Brooklyn, and now this one through the nose. Why the fear of getting it to the right? Well, there's apprehension because of that right lane. It being a little bit tighter down lane. EJ's getting through it. He's just knocking the guts out of it, right? I mean, he's just slow rubbing it. And so he's getting it to shape perfectly. Shota's rev rate's not near as high. So he's probably trying to be a little bit, a little bit more careful on that right lane. But he better get his legs underneath him real quick. EJ off to a perfect start. Shota's playing this left lane five boards left with his feet and three with his target. That's how much different the right and left lane are. Kawazoe! You know, his friends back home, what they would say about that shot right there? What would they say? Yatane! Sugoi! Who's the next? Well, I mean, it's great. A little bit, little bit left. You um, met right him squishy. Squishy. when he was how old? Right, yeah, Fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Two. Scotchy. Right here. Here's the legs. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Scotchy. That means a little bit. He wants him to move or get that ball a little bit, a little bit farther to the right on the right lane. Ten. Wow. Hard to believe that was a flat 10 as hard as he hit on that. You know, you're teaching us so much tonight. And here's another fun fact about Randy Peterson. You've been to Japan how many times? A couple. Over 50. Yeah. Yeah, I've been very fortunate to visit that, that great country and uh, did a lot of bowling, a lot of teaching. And right now, Tackett is giving a little less of his own. Be in match play tomorrow. You can watch that on Bowl TV. We'll have coverage for you Saturday, FS1, 7 Eastern Time, Sunday at noon on Fox. With a fist pump, he's perfect on the left. Three for three. Got that one in a little bit and it laid there. Always a good sign. Hey, if I know I have some tug area left of my target, I know I'm going to have a pretty good chance of bowling well. He knows right now. He's in that zone. That 21-time champion zone. has given him a big dilemma. This time he strikes. Wow. That was Zoe responds. That was big. Yeah. Almost a solid nine.
but he really needed this to kind of keep his hopes alive. And I know it's just halfway through this title match, but maybe this jump starts him and gets him going because one more strike and he can cut the deficit to one. He was with EJ Tech and Anthony Simonson on that Motown muscle team in 2018. Zoe. Come on, come on. Oh. He was wishing it to go. Interesting because the last shot that EJ threw on that lane, it held. And I think it's just too straight up the lane mm -hmm. for Shota. the story you met him when he was 14 how so uh, I was doing an exhibition in a clinic and he was he was there in high school and gave him a lesson the right right yeah just just the ball eyes 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 okay okay left lane I will okay okay wants his eyes to be farther right on that left lane but to finish the story yeah we that's where I first met Shota and that was in Nagasaki Ten. Yeah, another flat ten on the right lane for EJ. Mm. And both shots are really nice, too. EJ will finish on this right lane. It struck all three times on the left. But that was the question coming into tonight. Every player brought it up. What's going to happen on the right? Correct. And... Every higher seed coming on has all chosen to finish on the left lane. Show to your number on, one now. seed, same thing. Go in here. Come on. Tackett's sixth TV show out of a possible 11 appearances but he has not been able to win this season. That's why tonight means a lot for him and his momentum. And yeah, the messenger with a call in Motown that was answered. EJ smack it on the left lane. There's that beautiful rotation and ball roll by the reigning player of the year. And here comes a flying Boom. messenger right in the face of the 10. This is huge. Left. It was. Big left. He's just had that fear. Yeah. And Timmy is trying to get him to move his eyes farther right. Miggy, Miggy. Hidati, left. Miggy, right. Get your eyes farther right. It's one thing to say it. Mm. One game match. I think he touched on it maybe last night. Tournament leader in 2024. Or was it 2023 where the record was so bad for the tournament leader? Yep, two and five to start this year. For the one seed. There you go. Two and five. Yeah. So After ten and four last year for the one. Yeah. Uh, ten and four last year. There's his wife. Tony. Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yasuko. Time out. Time out. Shota's taking a timeout. Wants to talk to Tim. 27 at the arrows to 11 at the break point. Okay. okay. Yep. 27, oh. 11. Both lanes. Okay. Don't go so far oh. right on that the right lane. Okay. 27, 11. Use your legs. Yep. Ball will go there. Okay. okay.
saw his wife. He called his wife his, his rock, Suko. Let's go down to Tim Mack real quick. Timmy, it looks like his angles aren't steep enough, like he's afraid to get it to the right. We're going to make sure we stay back to the right and get it up the lane. So we're hoping 27, 10, 11. If it does that, it'll strike. That's the goal. Only one more shot on that right lane for Kawasaki. Kawasaki with a strike. Here in this, the eighth, this is where he will finish. Good, 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 good shot, good shot. So that's what I told him, to try to get back to the right. I thought he moved too far on the right lane and got in front of the ball return. We don't want to be getting there. So we want to make sure his ball gets back to the right, gets in that 11-12 zone. And if he does that, throws a couple strikes here. See if we can force, put some pressure on EJ. All right, Timmy, thanks. Great stuff, Randall, with Timmy Mack. Thanks, buddy. All right, we're attacking, we'll finish. Oh, my God. Really? Oh, my God. Flat 10, flat 10, and now this Paralyzer 5. Yeah, I mean, how could you not do anything but laugh at that? If I had a dollar for every five pin EJ Tackett left on television hitting the pocket, I'd have like four bucks. Thank you. Well, the plot so thickens. Nice. All right, come on, dude. One good one here. One good one. Come on now. He talked one to us about good shot. his season arc. He said, I build momentum. The more I'm playing, the better I'm doing. It's quite simple. Absolutely gorgeous, that shot there. There's Natalie. Now showed a must-strike situation for him as you take a look at the max scores right here, folks. 239 Tack at 234 Kawazoe. But to have any chance, he has to strike out, in my opinion. And I know that Tackett struggled a little bit on the right lane, but he's still hitting the pocket on that lane. And mm -hmm. that last shot, the five pin, was just a freak. Got to get it right. Got to get it right. Again. He just can't get it over there. He's just locked up. Just locked up. He's never able to figure it out. Couldn't get his mind to tell his body to get it going to the right on that lane. And he knows it. Remember Tackett's release when you said these replays are identical? That's been him on the right lane. Showed a, every time that same facial expression. He's going to take a re rack on the here. left lane regroup. But, you know, his mind is telling his body, look, you can't throw it too far to the right on the right lane. It's not going to come back. And but what does that do? It makes him pull every shot. He's got one pocket strike on the right lane. His other was a Brooklyn in the first frame. Strikes out, he shoots 214, Tackett's at 219 with spare strike in the 10th. Needs it, needs it, got it. Same shot, same shot, come on. Strike out, keep Tackett honest. 
his fourth TV appearance in America. One time, Jonah, one time. Drilling in, drilling in! A call came from Japan! Hey, boy, hey, boy! All ten, hey, mama. All ten, all ten, sir. Good job. All ten. We'll use the international plan tonight. My goodness. Well, that was a great time for that to happen. Still gives him a chance. Right lane just crushed him. He just never allowed himself to make good enough shots on the right lane, but it's not over. Nope. And she's not warming up yet. EJ Tackett will still need a mark in the 10th frame. Kawazoe. And for Shota, 2.13. And as you said, E.J. Tackett will need a mark here in the 10th. No, it's not over. That was a hard fought 2-13. Spare and five pins. He has not won this year. He told Kimberly he views it as a really strong season. But he knows that the judgment for him in this sport is that hardware. Is this EJ's moment? Attack it! Is a winner for the first time in 24. Yes! And let's go down to the floor real quick and talk with EJ Tackett's tour rep, Brett Spangler. Brett, why so dominant? Why so perfect tonight for EJ Tackett? You know what? Uh, EJ, before the show started, said, I feel like I've just got to control the lane. I've been trying to shoot monster scores all year. Instead of just doing what I do, control the lane and make good shots. That's what he committed to tonight. And it turns out he's just a heck of a shot maker. He threw a lot of good shots and looked amazing tonight. And thanks, Brett. Congrats to both of you. This one's for Tripp. E.J. Tackett is now a champion in 2024. Yeah! Yes! Cool. Motive. Motive, baby. Everybody. Here's the clincher. Tackett never missed the pocket the entire evening. The satisfying moment of the match is sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. And with the PBA commissioner, Tom Clark, standing, E.J. Tackett is a champ for the first time this season. Kimberly's with him. E.J., you were having a hard time finding strikes on that right lane, but you came through when you needed to. Walk us through that 10th frame. Well, I threw a lot of really good shots, and uh, that, that mode of pride dynasty did really good tonight. Uh, honestly, it's a ball I didn't throw at all in the other bay. Came over here tonight, looked really good, made a good choice, and, and threw a lot of really good shots, got a couple good breaks, and um, was able to get up there and throw it when I need it, and that's always, you know, the greatest feeling in the world. And um, Natalie's here tonight. Trip isn't. It's the first show that Trip hasn't come to, but it's so cool. Is this win for him? <laughs> yeah. I now can't let's... wait to uh, see my little baby boy. <laughs> Well, let's talk about the fact that you finally got this win in 2024. Do you feel like you got a monkey off your back now? I mean, kind of, yeah, even though, you know, the success that I've had in my career, when you go on little droughts, it sucks. Um, I talked to Parker, actually, in uh, Delaware, and he was telling me one stretch in his career, he went about 13 or 14 telecasts without winning. So that made me feel a lot better about myself. Um, so thank you, Parker, for that uh, great advice. And... Uh, 
you know, stick the process and just keep doing what you're doing. Well, the World Series is not over for you because you still have a chance at the World Championship. And tomorrow you've got round robin match play. So how do you, you're going to celebrate tonight, but how do you refocus to get back into it? <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> I got a long day tomorrow. We got 16 games to bowl. Um, you know, I, I'm in fourth place right now. Got a lot to do, got a lot of work to do. Try to climb the leaderboard as much as possible and, uh, you know, get, get on that show on Sunday. And that's, uh, that's going to be important. And maybe I can uh, be hoisting another trophy then. Well, congratulations on this win. Go enjoy this moment and see your wife, Natalie. The Tackett celebrates. Ooh.